horseshoe is back. What's going on, guys? Welcome back to another episode of Bring the Juice. Today, we are previewing your AFC South. We're going to preview this division today. Obviously, your guys, Cody Felger, Derek here, UCF Jaguar, Young Ari Gold from the Texans Unfiltered podcast as well. Fellas, how you doing? Doing great, man. Thanks for having us on. Absolutely, man. And, you know, it's always good for our listeners to get a little bit of a different perspective on these different teams. And, you know, I just kind of wanted to do that. Got to get your guys' perspective, run through each and every one of your rosters. So we've had UCF Jaguar on before, so we'll let you go, young Ari Gold. Is your name Ari? I didn't even ask you no, ahead of time. It's James. James. All right, James. We'll let you go first, man. Let's start with your guys' offense. Let's start with your quarterback position. Obviously, a lot going on with the quarterback position right now. A lot of unknown with Deshaun Watson. Give me a rundown on your quarterback position as it stands right now. Yeah, so Tyrod Taylor will be the starting quarterback. Um, and, you know, he, he he didn't get very many snaps in preseason games. I think he had a total of five drives. Looked like he had command of the offense, which was great. Uh, you know, it, it's it's a hard pill to swallow dropping from Deshaun Watson to Tyrod Taylor. Um, yeah. or even possibly dropping, you know, next level to Davis Mills. Um, but it's kind of the situation we're in. I think Tyrod is a good bridge quarterback to whatever may possibly happen next season, whether it's trading Deshaun or adding another quarterback. But I think he can command the offense. Um, he has familiarity with David Coley. Um, so, I mean, I should have average quarterback play. Um which uh, is really all we can hope for at this point. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So you said Terod Taylor will be your starting quarterback. That's just definitely interesting with obviously Davis Mills being you know, your, your, your guys is, I guess, first selection in this draft. Cause you guys had the third round pick and you took him there. That's, that's interesting. But what about your running backs? Do you guys have a, a pretty good stable of running backs from what I've seen with all the different boys you have in there? Where do you expect this group to go? And how do you think they can potentially complement each other this year? Well, I would expect to see a lot of what we saw in Baltimore with Philip Lindsay, Mark Ingram, David Johnson, and Scotty Phillips. Um, our roster isn't actually final yet, so uh, we don't know for a fact if David Johnson made the team or not or if we're going to carry all four. Um, nobody has released an actual updated roster yet, so I, I guess since it, it ended two hours ago, we'll see. But it, it looks like all four are still going to be on the roster. It, you know, it's nice. Uh, it's a nice stable of running backs. David's a little older. Mark's a little older, but Mark Mark has looked pretty spry in preseason. Uh, Philip Lindsay is a very capable back who has some successful seasons in Denver and has looked good in preseason. And then I think the dark horse for us is Scotty Phillips, to be honest. I, I think he's a guy that uh, people in the AFC South should probably get to know a little bit. He's an undrafted guy, was on our roster last year, didn't get a lot of snaps. Um, but in preseason, he's really lit it up and looks like he's going to fit the style of, uh, of the run offense that David Coley has implemented. Hmm. Gotcha. Well, what about your wide receivers? I'm curious because you guys over the last couple of years have had some turnover at wide receiver. What is your wide receiver group looking like right now? So we just cut Kiki. Um, okay. The Colts oh, wow. kill the Colts killer Kiki QT, right? Uh, yeah. Um, I think what was it? 2019. He had two 11 catch games against you guys, one in the playoffs and then one in the regular season. Yeah, uh, also my... was the one that fumbled the football the yeah. last game of the season against Darius Leonard. I'm sorry, I had to. I had to. Dar I'm sorry. Darius is such a great player. Um, but yeah, I mean, so right now we have Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins, Chris Conley, uh, Anthony Miller's on the injured reserve as of from right now, from what we know from his shoulder, um, and then uh, Andre Roberts. So you know, not not the deepest wide receiver room. Um, but capable players, right? Uh, you, UCF Jag, you're pretty familiar with Chris Conley. I think he was a guy that probably didn't really get a lot of shine in Jacksonville given kind of the situation of the quarterback at the time. Uh, before that, he was in Kansas City behind Sammy Watkins and Tyreek Hill, and then obviously a Travis Kelsey at tight end. Not a lot of targets to go around. Um, he's flashed in the preseason, so it'll be interesting to see him opposite of Brandon Cooks. Um, and then, our, you know, our, everybody's buzzing about Nico Collins. I think Nico Collins has been the star of training camp for for everybody in regards to the Texans' wide receiving room. Um, big, tall, strong wide receiver, built like Andre the Johnson, uh, stride like Andre the Johnson, 
Andre the Johnson. <laughs> it's almost like I'm saying Andre the Giant. Um, <laughs> <laughs> but um, so he, he's definitely a, you know our third round rookie. Traded up to get him. Uh, didn't play last year at Michigan uh, due to COVID. So kind of an, uh, a forgotten wide receiver, it seems like in, in draft rooms. But definitely a lot of potential there. Um, so yeah, I mean Brandon Cooks, Nico Collins, Andre Miller, um, Chris Conley. It, it, it's an okay wide receiving room. It's it's nothing that you're going to go to brag about, but it's something that can get the job done. Mm-hmm. Well, staying with those pass catchers, I know you guys obviously drafted Brevin Jordan there in the mid rounds, and you got guys like Ryan Izzo. I know he was a former you know Patriots guy a couple years ago. Uh, where, where do you stand on your tight ends right now? I love our tight ends. I think that's actually our strongest position group on offense. Um, Farrell Brown is a guy that um, very physical, uh, good route runner, can get separation. Uh, and then I'm extremely high on Jordan Akins. Uh, we took him out of U- U- uh, U- UCF. Yeah, sorry. I don't know why I was UFC, UCF. Yeah. Um, I'm a big Jordan Akins fan. I think he has the potential to really be a, a top you know, top 10, top 15 tight end in this league. For some reason, the chemistry between him and Deshaun over the last two years never really uh, was there. Deshaun's always looking for the deep ball, so Jordan didn't get a ton of targets. Uh, but when he has the ball in his hands, he's very electric, um, hard to get down, uh, very elusive. And so I think with him and Pharaoh Brown, it's going to be very interesting to see, especially when you have a check down Tyrod at quarterback. He's not going to take a lot of shots downfield. Um, so I think our tight ends will actually get a lot of play this year. Hmm. And then Brevin Jordan. Yeah, Brevin Jordan's more yeah. of a wide receiver at tight end. So, um, mm-hmm. you know, it's going to be interesting to see. Jordan Akins in his last year. He's also 29. He played baseball. Uh, he came out of the, in the draft at the age of 26. Um, so he'll likely won't be resigned by the team. So Brevin will likely fill his role. So we may see more snaps from him later on in the season. But outside of that, I mean, I, I, that's, that's the one position group I feel extremely excited about. Yeah. And then the last position that we want to talk about on this offense is the offensive line. Now, we know a couple guys here of note. I know there's some guys, you know, internally you guys probably feel good about. But I obviously know Laramie, Laramie Tunsil, Titus Howard. Those are two guys that I think even outside of the division, people would recognize their name. Um, then Marcus Cannon as well. That's a guy that I know definitely from New England when he played there. What is your offensive line looking like so far? Yeah, right side of the offensive line is is our weak point uh, with Charlie Heck, our sixth round pick last year, starting at right tackle, and then Max Sharping making the move from left guard the last two years to right guard. Um, so the right side's definitely uh, something that you you know people will want to keep an eye on. The left side of the line's pretty strong. Um, Justin Britt coming in at center, you know, replacing Nick Martin. Nick Martin was not a very consistent center. He had moments, but um, consistency was never his thing. Uh, so Justin Britt being bringing some consistency to that position is going to be um, really nice to have. Um, and then, you know, obviously with Laramie, I mean, Laramie's, you know, top five tackle in this league, you know, definitely shut down that left side. So um, mm-hmm. it'll be it'll be one of those position groups that you watch and you hope the chemistry can start to build up and, and you can start to play a little bit better. Marcus Cannon can come in and play right guard uh, potentially um, where Max Sharping's playing. Um, so. It's not strong, but it's not too weak. You know, I think everybody's familiar with the Texans just never getting the offensive line right. Um, so it's just pretty pathetic to see that, you know, we're kind of in the same position. But, you know, hopefully they can get it together with some chemistry with the same five guys playing week in, week out. Oh, we can go to the defense here. I know uh, that wasn't something that was very great for the Texans last year, but. I mean, I look at some of the names, Whitney Marcellus, Vincent Taylor, Malik Collins, Jordan Jenkins, and I know a couple of the names that are second string, uh, Ross Blacklock that you guys drafted, I think a year or two ago. Remember him, obviously lost Watt and a couple other boys on the defense as well. For the defensive line purposes, I mean, I I would have thought that, you know, keeping Marcellus uh, would have done better for you guys in terms of stopping the run, but that's not really been the case as of yet. What do you think of this defensive line as a whole? So I'll actually tell you, and and I might just be one of the uh, rare ones in this group, but I'm more excited about this defensive line than I have been over the last four years, honestly. Um, Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of people outside of Houston don't realize while J.J. Watt was great, a lot of what made J.J. Watt great was his freelancing and not sticking to assignments. So it really caused a lot of issues within the defensive line is picking up gaps and assignments. So um, 
you know, then that happened a ton, a ton last year. So when you're a defensive lineman and you're supposed to stick to a certain gap, and then all of a sudden JJ Watt just kind of comes over and doesn't play disciplined football, it just throws everything off. Um, so this year, you know, we've been talking a lot about the, on the podcast, a lot about the defensive line and how there probably won't be a 10 sack guy. If there is a 10 sack guy, it'll be Jacob Martin. Um, but outside of that, there won't be a, ten, there likely won't be a 10 sack guy. It's going to be a team effort. Um, you know, we should guys like Charles and third year guy, Malik Collins coming in from the Cowboys who last year had a down year, but prior to that has been a pretty good player in this league. Um, Whitney Merciless, awful against setting the uh, the edge. Honestly, I don't expect him to get a ton of playing time. Um, we have our, our uh, second year third round rookie Jonathan Grenard, um, who who has shown lots of flashes in preseason. So Ross Blacklock looks like he's going to be playing three tech, which is where he should be playing. Um, and then Vincent Taylor and, and and all the other players that you mentioned. So this defensive line is going to be better than what we've seen over the last two years. Like I said, it's always just been kind of J.J. Watt. Maybe the occasional guy will get a sack here and there, but that's not the case anymore. And I honestly think that's going to help this defensive line quite a bit is J.J. Watt not being on this line. Gotcha. Very hot take indeed. So the linebacker group, Zach Cunningham, uh, Christian Kirksey, Kevin Pierre-Lewis, uh, a couple of those boys, I, I recognize the names. Uh, what's the standing on the linebacker group? Yeah, Paul Kruger Hill as well. Um, you know, so that that the linebacking group, you know, I think every team's looking to find that fast coverage linebacker, that Miles Jack, that most people can't find, right? Uh, tackling machine also has the side to side speed to be able to potentially cover tight ends and things of that nature. Um, so that's what we went after this year. It was a kind of a running joke within like Texans fandom. I think we ended up signing at one point nineteen linebackers um, in free agency to try to to try to find some speed at linebacker um, and Christian Kirksey older, but has some speed. Zach has speed, but has always sucked in coverage. Uh, Kruger Hill looks like he might potentially be able to do it as well. So, you know, a lot of unknowns on, on the linebacking core because we really don't know. We made the switch from a three, four to a four, three. So assignments are going to be a little bit different as well. Uh, we haven't seen a lot of it. We haven't seen Zach on the field much in preseason, um, but this, they look to be better because they look to be faster. And uh, this cornerback group, I got to be honest, I, I took a look at it just a minute ago, and I was honestly forgot that a lot of these names were on here. Uh, a couple of pretty decent names. I mean, when you look at it from experience-wise, uh, Bradley Roby, who you know I'm pretty fond of. I'm an Ohio State guy myself, so I like Bradley Roby, even though I don't really think he's been the same corner since he was with Denver. Terrence Mitchell, uh, Justin Reed at safety, really good safety there. Eric Murray as well. And then you got guys like Desmond King and Lonnie Johnson Jr., Terrence Brooks, those boys. So, I mean, you know, say what you want about this corner group, but it's definitely got a lot of experience to it. How do you think they do this season? Yeah, I think, um, you know, the biggest thing, the biggest addition this year for free agency for us and really like the biggest one we had was a one-year deal for $4 million on Desmond King. We've been, we've lacked a slot corner for, you know, the inception of the Texans, to be honest with you. Um, we, we've never been good out of the slot. It's where you guys have always killed us. It's where T.Y. will line up and kill us. He'll line up on the outside and kill us too. But mo most of the time, the last two or three years, it's been in the slot. Um, so adding Desmond King is going to be nice. Um, he's, he's very good against the run as well. Bradley Roby, um, I, I'm a big Bradley Roby fan. I, I, I think he's a, a top-tier corner. Um it kind of sucks when you don't have a pass rush, you know, those two complement each other at such a high level that you really are leaving these corners on an Island when they can't, you know, they're not gonna be able to cover for more than four or five seconds. And they're out there asked to do it for about 10, all of 2020. Um, so I, I feel a little bit better about it. Terrence Mitchell is a good number two opposite Bradley Roby. Um, so we should feel pretty good about the cornerback group. It's the depth behind it. That's not something to be too proud of. Uh, not a lot of depth. Um, not a lot of young guys, so definitely some issues there. The game one against the Jags, Bradley Roby suspended, so he won't be on the field, uh, which means Vernon Hargraves is going to get a lot of playing time, which is not good. Um, but safety-wise, uh, I'll tell you the, the player to watch is going to be Justin Reed. Uh, his rookie year, he had a great year. Um, he looks a lot better in this game, in this Tampa 2, uh, Lovey Smith system. He looks like he's playing with a little less thought 
um, and really just playing off more of his instincts, which is what made him successful his rookie year. Uh, and then Lonnie Johnson Jr. is a player to watch to really kind of play that strong safety role that come down, uh, downhill, lay the hit down, um, can kind of roam in, in, uh, in, in coverage as well. And then Terrence Brooks is a guy who's played, made a ton of plays in preseason. So um, it's all going to come down to this, this scheme and Lovey Smith and the play calling. I'll tell you this, you know, based on just the Tampa two in general, that middle of the field is going to be open for tight ends or wide receivers most of the time. Cause that's just what happens in cover two. But um, outside of that, I think that there's some pretty, pretty good feelings about the, the safety group. Yeah. Yeah. I was curious also because I'm a big special teams guy myself. I was curious for your guys' special teams. How was that looking this year? Looks way better. It uh, looks like looks a, a lot better. Um, coverage wise, we've looked really good in preseason. Uh, last year we weren't so bad, so it wasn't, it's not too much of a step forward. It's going to be more on the returns that we're hoping to see. You know, we signed Andre Roberts uh, in the off season, a pro bowl returner. Hopefully, you know, he can replicate some of the things that he's done in the past. Um, and then outside of that, I mean, that, that's really kind of what it boils down to. We have a great punter. Um, I mean, a great punter. This guy's he's got a boot on him. Uh, Kaimi Fairbairn, uh, not the greatest field goal kicker, kind of spotty at times. But at the end of the day, I mean, I think every kicker is somewhat that way unless you have Adam Vinatieri, right? So um, right. just kind of how it works. Um, so I, I would say you, you should see a, a, a much better special teams than what we saw in 2020. Um, yeah. Awesome. Well, great. Thank you for that insight. Really appreciate it. That was, that was really good because I had no idea about the Texans, honestly. So I think that was really good for our listeners to kind of get an idea. Okay. We're going to play the Texans twice a year. This is what we got to expect from them, but all right, moving on to my guy, UCF Jaguar. What's up, man? How you doing? Oh, fantastic. I can't believe the regular season is almost here, to be honest. It's, it's wild. Oh, I'm so happy. It's, it's I great. know. Yeah. And you guys get to see number one overall pick, Trevor Lawrence. I mean, that's exciting in itself. What have you oh, seen man. from Lawrence so far in the preseason? Oh, man. Just, I mean, not only preseason, but, but just training camp, too. You know, I know a lot of people, I mean, you know, I think around the NFL, I don't think people are really prepared for him because a lot of people say overhyped. You know, he's on a Jaguars, you know, or they're going to ruin him, all this different stuff. And, you know, you have these different guys with hot takes about, you know, other rookie quarterbacks being better. But, I mean, I'll just tell you guys this. I mean, you, you guys know that I've been pretty, I, I think, non-biased when it comes to different takes I have on here. I'm a lot different on Twitter. I like to troll on Twitter. Uh, that's a different <laughs> me. But but me on me on YouTube and me on other streams, you know, I'm pretty, I'm pretty uh, you know, honest about it. But, I mean, he's the real deal. Um I, I firmly believe that like the only like Trevor Lawrence has all the tools that you want. He has everything that you that you'd want. The only way Trevor Lawrence fails is if the Jaguars ruin him. You know what I mean? And that's that's really the only concern right now that I have with him, because obviously, you know, you've had different things in the past when it comes to that. So um, but I mean, he's going to be terrorizing, honestly, the AFC South, similar to the way Peyton Manning did back in the day. Andrew Luck. Um, Deshaun Watson was, I mean, it's, it's, I mean, he's the real deal. You know what I mean? He, it's gonna, he's going to be good. That's, that's all I got to say about that. <laughs> all right. All right, man. All right. Coming out strong swinging. So you're not the Gardner Minshew Stan I saw on Twitter. Oh right? no, no, no. <laughs> he is. And you know, it's, it's, I don't like hate Gardner Minshew or anything, but he's just so overrated by the fan base. And the issue with Gardner Minshew is that, like Jaguar fans have such a low um, like they have such low expectations out of the quarterback position and they say, Oh, he's the second or third best quarterback in Jags history. And it's like, okay, you're comparing them to like Blake Bortles and David Gerard and all this stuff. It's like our, the standards for quarterback play are so low where they think Gardner Minshew is this good quarterback, but I just don't think he's good. I mean, he's he he his arm strength wears down as the season goes on. He's very limited with what he can do. Like he's not like a he's a shorter guy, but he's not like a Drew Brees where you can see in between linemen very well. He doesn't throw to the middle of the field. Um, you know, as the season goes on, he wears down a lot. And at the end of the day, he was traded for a sixth round pick. So that kind of I, I think just the trade value kind of says it all. And you know, if you look at his if you look at his stats, he looks pretty good. Like thirty nine touchdown passes, eleven interceptions. But, I mean, if you actually watch him from game to game, he's nothing like his stats say. I mean, he, he, he takes dumb sacks. He doesn't 
you know, risk the ball very much when it comes to, you know, taking shots at it. You know, when you look at Trevor Lawrence on film, like, you know, he'll do a boot like and roll out and you see kind of the tight end that's over there open that you can just dump off for five yards. But what Trevor Lawrence will do, he'll throw it deep. He'll try to fit it in between the zone and get it to a receiver, you know, 25 yards downfield. And that's just the difference between, you know, that, that makes a quarterback special between as opposed to being a Case Keenum, you know, Gardner Minshew when it comes to, you know, just kind of taking what the defense gives you and, and, and throwing the easy ball. Yeah, for sure. Well, I mean, you guys have a pretty good stable of running backs. I mean, also, you got James Robinson, who last year was very, very good. I mean, him and Jonathan Taylor were right up there among the best rookies in the league last year. So, obviously, it sucks with Travis Ntien uh, out for the year. But, you know, I feel like there's some other guys potentially who can help, you know, help with that running back room. What are your thoughts overall first on Robinson and then the other guys in that room right now? Yeah, I mean, we had a pretty good running back group. And then our first overall pick, Travis Etienne. Got hurt for the year, but I mean, it's nothing new for Jags fans. In 2015, we lost the number three overall pick, Dante Fowler, for the year um, during like rookie mini camp. So it's, I mean, it sucks, but I mean, honestly, ETN, he was just, he almost felt like a luxury in a way because, uh, I mean, James Robinson rushed for a thousand yards last year. And I mean, he's, he's a, he's a good running back. I mean, um, I mean, we remember, I mean, the, the fans, I mean, they remember week one when nobody knew about him. I mean, you know, I remember being on a preview video with you guys and with no preseason, you guys were like, what, what can we expect out of James Robinson? I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't know anything about him. We, he was good enough where we cut Leonard Fournette like out of nowhere. And all of a sudden it was like, OK, who's going to start? OK, James Robinson, undrafted rookie out of Illinois, like North Illinois State or something like that. I'm like, all right, you know, we'll see what happens. And then, I mean, he looked I mean, he was good. He was good last year. I mean um he doesn't go down on first contact like, like the thing that threw me nuts about Leonard Fournette was like you know we'd be sending oh big big run and then someone would grab his ankle and he'd go down I mean I was like how can this guy like not break tackles it I didn't understand it James Robinson like lower center, center of gravity um was really just able to you know similar like Maurice Jones Drew was just um really able to kind of keep his body upright when it comes to not getting tackled down and I mean it was exciting but past that I mean we have Carlos Hyde Carlos Hyde is what he is. I mean, he's, I guess, you know, I guess solid, I would say. I mean, he's getting older, obviously, so he's not going to, you know, get more than four or five carries a game. And then, you know, we have some backups, like Dar Dar Ungabawale is his name, and, you know, that they need to fit in. But I think it's going to be essentially a two-running back rotation with uh, James Robinson and uh, Carlos Hyde. And I think as the game goes on, if, if crunch time gets here, they're going to start off and want to give some Carlos Hyde packages. But, you know, I think I think uh, James Robinson's going to get you know the 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 lion's share of the carries. You know, maybe twenty carries a game. Yeah, I love James Robinson. James Robinson. I'm excited to see what he's going to do in year number two. But your wide receiver group is also fantastic. Like, I really like your wide receiver group with all you guys did. You guys obviously have DJ Chark coming back. You added Marvin Jones, and you have some other guys as well. Avisca Chenault. Like this wide receiver room, in my opinion, from just an outside perspective, looks pretty good. What do you see from it? Yeah, it's versatile for sure. I mean, the top three guys, you have DJ Chark, who's kind of the deep threat. You know, he'll catch the 50-50 balls. Um, he's also pretty quick. Like not a lot of people know, but he's, he's very fast. Um, also, Marvin Jones is a good, solid guy that can kind of do a lot of different stuff. Really like a red zone guy. I mean, he's coming off of like a 975-yard season and, uh, you know, Double digit touchdown, so that's good. And then LaVista Chanel, a big time move the chains guy. I mean, last week he literally carried a man 12 yards down the field. Just super powerful. Um, so yeah, I mean, we have a pretty solid stable of, you know, the top three wide receivers are very good. They kept like Jamal Agnew, who's like more of a punt returner, and Taven Austin. So we have five wide receivers on the roster right now. Um, I think they're gonna be, I mean, they have the number one overall priority when it comes to waiver. Uh, claims so they're gonna be very active I mean, you know I'd say 15 to 20 percent of the players on there you know I'd say probably they're gonna make at least five moves so that's 10 percent so I mean there's gonna be a lot of movement there they cut our you know Colts legend former Colts legend Philip Dorsett so rip that uh, yeah. and, and the funny thing was like he was he was really uh, a lot of fans are like okay this guy's gonna make the roster this guy's gonna make the roster but it's yeah. like you know, everybody, and the same thing with Laquan Treadwell, but it's like, we know what these guys are. You know what I mean? Yeah. They, they they bounce around from team to team. They were first round picks that were, you know, way overdrafted. And, um, but the thing about, you know, like Colin Johnson, for example, he got cut, but it's, 
it, it's tough because when you look at wide receivers, you know, especially, you know, into the roster guys, it's like, okay, they're good at receivers, but are they good on special teams? Can they block downfield? There's a lot more out of the receiver position outside of just, you know, being a big body that can catch, you know what I mean? Right. Yeah. Hard to believe New England made <laughs> Philip Dorsett look good. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I mean, I mean they, they just, they Hard like speed, believe. man. They, they, you, you, you know, they think they can get a fast guy, big fast guy and turn him into something great, but you know, it doesn't always work out like that. Right. He kind of is what he is here. All right. Well, let's stay with another, some more pass catchers here. Let's talk about some of your tight ends. I don't really know anything about all your, any of your guys, if I'm being completely honest. I know Luke Farrell's name, but other than that, what do you see from these guys? Yeah, we can just skip over this group. I don't even think we have any tight ends, do we? <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. Skip my guy, oh, Luke uh, Farrell. Yeah, I, I mean, they, they got a bunch Farrell. of guys. They got, I mean, they have Chris Manhurts, blocking guy. Luke Farrell's also a blocking guy. Um, James O'Sonnesty, a couple years ago, he was coming on to a pretty decent year. And then, um, he got injured. So, I mean, tight end group, it's kind of uh, kind of got to, you know, put ex- expectations low and let them surprise you. Yeah. No Tim Tebow, at least. Oh, <laughs> no. The legend. I, lo- I, lo- I love Tim Tebow. I mean, I, I, was a, I mean, growing up, I was a Gator fan. And, uh, you know, I was like 12, 13 years old when he was making his uh, runs. And uh, my number in lacrosse and football was 15 because of him. So, Love Tim Tebow. And, and I got to say, I mean, it was a, you know, a lot of people were like, this was dumb. They shouldn't have ever got him in the first place. But me, I went to training camp. A lot of other fans went to training camp and, you know, the tight ends were right in front of the fans. And, you know, just me being able to see Tim Tebow in a Jags uniform and up, I mean, I haven't seen him in, in over 10 years. It was worth it just for the fan experience to be like, man, like there's Tim Tebow. So I don't think it was all, uh, it was all a loss there. Yeah. For sure. All right, let's move to the last part of your offense, the offensive line. Now, I think you guys have pretty good tackles from what I can tell. I know Cam Robinson obviously got hurt, but I've always liked him as well. Juwan Taylor as well, you know, out of Florida a couple of years ago. You guys did draft Ben Barch this year out of uh, St. John. So what do you see from this, this tackle group? What do you see from the interior? What do you see in your offensive line? Well, the interior is actually the strength of the team uh, with Brandon Linder, Andrew Norwell, and uh, AJ can, um, and the, the offensive line. Everyone says the Jags' offensive line suck. I mean, it's not that bad. I mean, in 2019, we had a thousand yard rusher with Leonard Fournette. Last year, a thousand yard rusher with James Robinson. You know, so two different running backs got a thousand yards with them. Uh, just the big thing is the you know when you load the box, you know, and then you know Gardner Minshew not really being able to spread the field much. I mean, it's it's going to make an offensive line look a lot worse. You know, I mean, if you have a guy like Trevor Lawrence out there and he's wheeling and dealing. It's going to be a lot easier. It's going to make the offensive line look a lot better. So, um, you know, obviously, you know, everything can need improvement. And it's tough for offensive lines to be great because, you know, everyone says we need to improve this spot. We need to improve that spot. But there's literally in the NFL, there's there's 32 NFL teams. There's five starting offensive linemen. That makes 180 starting offensive linemen in the NFL. You know what I mean? It, it, you know, there's, you know, what – my quarterback, there's 15 to there's 15 great quarterbacks out there. There's 15 great linemen out there. That means there are teams out there that really don't have any great linemen. I mean, it's just it's a tough position, you know. And you're also not you know rotating these guys in and out like on D line where you can get you know different types of guys and you know in different situations. I mean, your offensive line is kind of what it is. So um, you know that's why sometimes these you pay these guys like Trent Williams a lot of money because man, if you can get a guy and, and and you know Quentin Nelson too. I mean, if you can get a guy that's just outstanding, it's it's huge, man. Yeah. All right, let's move to the defense here. So, are you guys are you guys running a three four or is it or am I? Just, we are okay. I was checking that because I saw they had with the depth chart. I saw they had four linebackers listed, and that's why I was kind of confused by that one at first. So, I guess we'll just stick with the defensive ends here in the nose tackle for right now. Um, I'm seeing names like Malcolm Brown, uh, Devon Hamilton, who I know from Ohio State again, uh, not a whole lot there, more of just a bull rushing kind of guy that has a lot of uh, upside with that. And then Roy Robertson Harris. Uh, talk to me a little bit about the defensive end group. I know we'll talk like Josh Allen and the others, the premier pass rushers, but uh, that's just what I see from the defensive ends in the nose tackle room. 
Yeah, just the D line. I mean, it's going to look completely different from last year. I mean, last year it was just, I mean, first of all, if you look at it, like all, all our best players got injured. Devon, uh, Devon Hamilton at nose tackle. Then obviously Josh Allen got hurt. Um, so we had some little bit of injury issues. Also, uh, if you look at the improvements in the off season, I mean, uh, we got some free agents in here when it comes to Roy Robertson, Harris and G hard ward. Also uh, we traded for Malcolm Brown and then we drafted J two Felly. And then we're also going to get guys back from injury. And then our run defense last year was just horrible. It was horrendous because just the attrition was so bad. I mean, you guys saw I me. Mean, we played you guys week one and then week 17. You know, week one, we held you guys down in the run game pretty well. And then week 17, like, I mean, Jonathan Taylor is still running. I mean, he was just, it was, it was, and it was bad because like literally every week a guy would get hurt and then we'd sign a guy off the street and then he'd be playing D-line. It's just, you know what I mean? If he can't stop the run, that's just a severe weakness because, you know, if you look, if you look at two teams and if you look at the box score at the end of the day, if, uh, you know, one team's quarterback threw the ball 15 times and the other team's quarterback threw the ball 45 times, you probably know who won the game. So, um, I mean, we made some improvements there. Then obviously we're changing the whole defensive scheme. So um, it's it's going to be cool. It's going to be cool to see a different defense because our last defense coordinator, we've had some since 20, like 14 or 2015. Um, he was just horrible. But now we bring in a guy with a new defensive scheme with uh, Joe Colon coming over from the Ravens. So it's going to be exciting to kind of see who steps up and see get guys get back from in, some, from injury and see what, I guess, the, the D-line can do in this new scheme. Yeah, absolutely. Well, I mean, you know, we look at the linebacker group and, you know, it's still pretty, it's still pretty deep, you know, when you look at it, even after you guys lost uh, Joe Schobert from last year. Uh, did the change in the scheme and the defense have anything to do with why Schobert ended up leaving or was that more of a money issue? Yeah, I mean, it was a, it was a combination of scheme and like money just because, um, Joe Schobert was making a lot of money mm -hmm. and they just kind of said, look, the drop off from Joe Schobert to the next guy who, who is a uh, Damian uh, Wilson, uh, no Damian Williams from Kansas city, who is used to the scheme. They just said, look, it's, it's not really that much of a drop off. We'll get this guy out of here. And kind of, it was a salary dump type of thing. He had a big contract. So, you know, the, the, and a lot of, a lot of this casual fans don't understand. It's like only a six round pick for Joe Schobert. Like we could have gotten more. It's like, no, it's, it's a salary dump. You know what I mean? They don't yeah. want to take on a contract. You know, you get them out of here, you know, a team could off offer a penny, you know, just anything just to get them off of the books. So that's kind of what that was. Uh, okay. This wasn't the best scheme fit for the three, four defense. He wasn't, they need more of a, a, a big thick thumper run stopping guy at that, at that spot. And uh, he's more of a pass, pass, uh, you know, passing uh, linebacker and coverage. So, that's really the main thing with him. Gotcha. So uh, they move on and, you know, we'll see what we get out of that spot. All right. Gotcha. Well, I mean, obviously look at the weak side linebacker. When you look at some of the edge rushers, you have Josh Allen being the premier one. Everybody knows Josh Allen at this point. I re recognize Jihad Ward's name as well. And then you look at these linebackers rounding it out. Uh, strong side being Caleb on Chasen and right inside linebacker being Miles Jack. Again, two young uh impressive linebackers in their own right. Uh, I would say, I would say this is probably the strength of your defense right now. I mean, am I right in saying that? Uh, no, the defensive back spot is cornerback. Gotcha. Honestly, the whole defense, the safeties are actually much improved. We, we literally have an 80% turnover at the defensive backfield. If you count the nickel. So that's probably the strength. Gotcha. Gotcha. All right, well, let's look at the uh, corners and the safeties here. Uh, Shaquille Griffin, you guys signed him this offseason. Uh, C.J. Henderson, who I think is still going to be a, a good corner at some point, uh, just had his issues a little bit last year getting started. Uh, Sidney Jones, you guys also uh, signed him in the offseason. Uh, I see Ruby Ford and Rayshon Jenkins. So, yeah, I mean, a bunch of good names there. I mean, you got to be impressed with the secondary and what they're building there. Yeah, and, I mean, last year the secondary was horrible, especially out there to CJ Henderson getting injured, and we didn't really have much at safety. But uh, this offseason they go out, they get, you know, they spend most of their money on defense this offseason, specifically with Shaquille Griffin and the Rayshon Jenkins. And Rayshon Jenkins had a really good 
uh, preseason. He can just play all over the place. Shaquille Griffin has struggled a little bit, um, but you know, obviously, when the live bullets come, we'll kind of see you know what he has. And then uh, C.J. Henderson. I mean, it looked like he was not going to play. I mean, it was weird because he got hurt like midway through the season last year with a with a groin injury, got put on the IR. Then he missed OTAs and training camp with a like a shoulder injury, and then he misses the beginning of training camp. He he finally comes back, and then like Urban Meyer kind of puts him on like a bike near the whole team. But then all of a sudden, he after one practice, he misses a couple of practices due to personal reasons. So it's like, what is going on with this guy? Like, like do we need to do something with him? But then he's come back, and I mean, he's been incredible, man. Like he is, he's the best player on the Jaguars defense. You know what I mean? Like w- when he's out there, when he's doing his thing, because um, man, he. And the thing is, there's some things that you look at on, like, if you look at on a TV, you don't see that he's doing until you look at the film because, like, you know, he's just diagnosing, uh, you know, different routes that these guys are running. And then he's baiting the quarterback into, you know, saying, oh, I'm going to follow this guy deep. But then instead, he's, he's he knows there's a guy coming across in his zone and then he's going to go over there and break it up. So um, I've been extremely impressed with CJ Henderson. Like, I was, I was, so close to just writing him off and saying, all right, like, are we going to have to trade another first round cornerback away from our team? But um, luckily he's come back in a good way. And then the Jaguars drafted a cornerback 33rd overall in the NFL draft um, with Tyson Campbell, who, you know, he's a guy, I mean, he's been all around the ball, but the same issues that appeared on this college shape kind of appear in a preseason where um, the guy is extremely sticky. He can be right on the hip of a wide receiver, but when the ball, he doesn't have like that much ball skills yet. And, and he had two, he had one interception in college in his career. You know what I mean? And that's what makes him drop. But at the same time, like he's always there. So he has to just develop the ball skills where he can locate the ball and just get his hands up and bat it down. You know what I mean? So that kind of stuff takes live reps. Um, that's one of the things that when you look at our defense this year, like that might struggle at because our team is full of first and second year guys. You know what I mean? That's why like, you know, right now I'd probably put us at maybe six wins, six, seven wins, um, just because, you know, there's going to be a lot of growing pains, but you know, the foundation of our team is here. It's just how, how quickly can these guys, you know, get up to speed when it comes to the maturation of um, how they play and uh, you know, progress from there. Gotcha. Cool. I'm curious about your special teams as well. Where does that stand right now? Yeah. I mean, Josh Lambeau is, Josh Lambeau's a Josh Lambeau's a great kicker, and he doesn't get much uh, like like Josh Lambeau. We got him in 2017. He has not missed a single field goal inside of uh, TIAA Bank Field in Jacksonville. Not a single field goal he's missed. Um, you know, he's one of he, I think he has like the best field goal percentage since he kind of got on the Jaguars. But you know, no one knows about him because he doesn't make crucial kicks because the Jaguars have sucked. You know what I mean? So it's not like a Justin Tucker where all right, you know, Justin Tucker's in here to win the game, you know, and he doesn't have a lot of important kicks on his resume. So, I mean, but he knocked him through in 2017 when the Jabbers went to the AFC Championship game. So he has that, um, and he's also got that kind of a cockiness that you kind of like in a, in a, you know, because a lot of these, a lot of these field goal kickers, they're a little timid. Um, they don't have a lot of confidence, and that's how, that's sometimes a failure of these guys. I mean, there's so many guys in the world that can hit 40, 50 yard field goals, but you know, they come out here and they're in front of 60, 70,000 people and it's loud and they have all this pressure on them. Only the elite can uh, knock them through. So uh, that's the thing about, um, you know, that's the thing about Josh Lambeau. Then Logan Cooks, he's, he's a good punter. They signed Jamal Agnew, the returner, to a lot of money this offseason. Like, I was like, wow, that's a lot of money. And he literally hasn't returned any kicks and any punts in the preseason because Urban Meyer said that he's too valuable to be back there right now. So they're kind of holding him to close to their vest, but they think super highly of him. So uh, we'll just, we'll see. Gotcha. Awesome. Well, guys, the, the way I want to do the, the next two teams, the way I want to do the Tennessee Titans and the Colts is I kind of want to get your guys' perspective. We'll start with you, James, because I know you haven't spoken in a while. We'll start with your perspective on, on something, then we'll go to Dalton, and then we'll just go back and forth on that. So we'll start here with the Tennessee Titans, with their team. Obviously, there's a lot of star power on this Titans offense. They got Tannehill, they got Henry, 
They signed Julio Jones. They have A.J. Brown. Uh, you know, their offensive line is pretty good. What are your guys' thoughts on this Titans offense? Um, I mean, I think the Titans offense is is a consistent offense, has been for the last couple of years. Um, it, it all comes down to Derrick Henry. Unlike most teams where it comes back, you know, comes down to quarterback play here, you know, there in Tennessee, it all comes down to Derrick Henry and if he can get hot. Um, offensive line always seems to be good there. Um, so as long as, you know, Derrick Henry's continuing to do what he does and they do a lot of play action with Ryan Tannehill, I think the Titans could be, you know, a pretty good team this year. You know, it, it's going to come down to you guys or the Titans for the division, most likely. Um, you know, depending on what you guys get out of your quarterback. So, uh, you know, I, the Titans offense is the Titan offense. I'm, I'm not really worried about Tannehill chucking it downfield to Julio Jones or, or A.J. Brown. Um, that's not his game. I'm sure he'll have a couple couple shots on play action. But outside of that, it's not like he's going to sit back and, and pick a part of defense. I mean, that's never been Ryan Tannehill's game. Hmm. Okay. Dalton? Yeah, it, it's tough for the, the Titans because, like, you know, they're one of those teams that – really relies on a running back and you know that's that can be pretty good for the short term but in the long term man I mean these like running backs age like milk man I mean right now Todd Gurley Todd Gurley's 27 years old and the guy is like washed it's crazy I mean obviously Derrick Henry's a dip is a different you know species when it comes to really what he can do and like just his offseason regimen but I mean you look back at like Adrian Peterson you know Adrian Peterson was a freaking beast you know, when he was a running back, but you know, I, I'd say half of his career, he's been a guy, you know I mean? He went to the saints, the Cardinals, the, the uh, Washington football team, and then like the lions, it's like, you know, at some point, Derrick Henry, I mean, time shows that these running backs hit a wall and, you know, they have a certain amount of mileage on them. Obviously it's, it's weird when you talk about Derrick Henry, just cause he's such a freak. It's uh you know, hard to, you know, say he's going to slow down or anything, but um, so obviously the running back, they really run through him. A big thing that I worry about is just the offensive coordinator spot because, um, obviously they, they were a team that, I mean, they, they, they struggled to find like offensive coordinators, you know, they bring a guy in for like a year and, you know, they, they couldn't solidify that position. And then, you know, that's one thing that's tough about having a defensive coach. And that's one thing that like, like the, the Vikings have struggled with. You know, they have Mike Zimmer, who's a pretty good head coach, but then he goes in there and, like, he has Pat Shermer. He does great at all of his coordinator. Then the team grabs him. And then next year they have Kevin Stefanski. You know, he has a great offense, and the Browns hire him. So it's like you're recycling these offensive coordinators, and then you're just recycling these, um, you know, these different offensive schemes, and uh, it, it, it can be hard. So what? how good is their offensive coordinator? I mean, Arthur Smith was really good the way he – just, I mean, he killed it last year. I mean, that offense was just rolling. He uh, really, really just found this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, he really just found the strengths. Of, I mean, he woke up a sleeping beast with Tannehill. And I, I do think Tannehill is good. Um, I'm not one of these people that, you know, are like, oh, you know, Tannehill. I mean, obviously, Derrick Henry. Derrick Henry helps Tannehill a lot. But I'm not going to knock, you know, knock Tannehill on that because, oh, just be lazy and say he they just have a running back. I mean, he does his assignment well when it comes to really selling play actions. And I mean, he can get the ball out there. It's just, I, I just, I just have some worries about them, especially with like, you know, you know, their offense could be good, but what is their defense? I mean, they, they won the AFC South last year without having a defense. You know I mean? They just, just out, you know, outscored opponents basically uh, just because their offense was just so high powered. Um, so that, that's just a big, that's the big thing about them. But I also think we've seen in the past, specifically in the playoffs that, Ryan Tannehill every year in the playoffs can't get the job done. You know, it always yeah. comes down to Tannehill. They shut down Derrick Henry and they have to rely on Ryan Tannehill and he's not able to do what is needed to be able to put points on the board for the Titans to be able to continue down that path. And so yeah. I, I think Ryan does rely heavily on Derrick Henry and it shows whether it be statistically or just when you watch the film, he's definitely not a guy that's going to go out there and, take a lot of shots and, and really just continue to develop as a quarterback. Yeah. I mean, we, even, we even saw last year a little bit, like, you know, when the Colts played the Titans the first time, right. We, we limited Derrick Henry and we were able to beat him. But the second time when we had all that COVID outbreak and we didn't, we were missing like some of our best defensive linemen, 
what they do? They ran it with Derrick Henry and they beat us. Like, yeah. no, not to say like, I do respect Ryan Tannehill. I think he's a good quarterback, but yeah, I do think if he doesn't have a running game, he's a little bit susceptible. Um, and obviously we'll see what happens with the Julio stuff. You know, if that does help their passing offense a little bit, but yeah, I think you're right. I, I, I think we're all on the same page there when it comes to and, that. And, and, that, and that's the thing about like, like the Rams last year. I mean, the Rams had a great team and no one took them seriously because Jared Goff is their quarterback. Now they go on and get Matthew Stafford. Now you look at that team. It's like, man, like this team could be really good. And like, that's the thing about today's quarterbacks, man. It's like, like you have to have like an elite quarterback nowadays to be to have sustainable success. You need a great head coach and you need uh, a great, great quarterback. I mean, you have these teams that can, you know, flash in a pan, they can get out there and they can, you know, go to the, cha- you know, the championship games. So the teams that are consistently there, you know, are the teams that have great court. And it sucks because I mean, y- there you have guys like, like Derek Carr, is like a good quarterback, but he's not like elite. You know what I mean? And, you know, back in the day, you'd be able to kind of get away with that kind of stuff. But nowadays with the way the NFL is like, you know, with the direction that it's going, it's like, man, like, like you really need that guy. Yeah. And I mean, is it fair to say that the Titans offense will be even more top heavy? You know, I mean, they, we, they added Julio Jones, which obviously is a tremendous weapon, but you look at, all the threats that they did lose. You know, you look at Corey Davis being gone. You look at Adam Humphreys not being there anymore. That was one of the better slot receivers. And then Jonu Smith, their tight end, who was, you know, one of their best pass catchers in the red zone. And I mean, he was one of the best tight ends in the league. I mean, he was one of the most sought after free agents when free agency started. And now he's on the Patriots. I mean, does it become more and more top heavy for them that if one of those guys d- isn't panning out, then it could it make their offense even more inefficient? I, I think the arrow is pointing down for the Titans. I mean, I think, I think they can, they can be maybe as good as last year, but like, I don't look at what they did this off season and can go, okay, they are now ready to make a run. I mean, I mean, they got Julio Jones in here, which I mean, he's, he's a good player, but I mean, he's not, it's not, like it's not like they brought in DeAndre Hopkins. You know what I mean? It's not like they brought in – they didn't bring in uh, Julio Jones from 10 years ago. You know, they brought in um, – I mean, you know, they brought in an older Julio Jones. So – and and obviously, like, I, my biggest concern is, like, them losing Arthur Smith. I mean, he was a great office coordinator. So, um, I think I think if anything, they take a step back. I don't, I don't think – I don't look at the moves they made and say, okay, like, they're ready to, to turn the corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And also that, I mean, we look at this defense, it's really nothing to write home about. There's a couple good players for Tennessee, but I mean, you look, they per- basically just scrapped their entire secondary this off season. They did add some guys that you're like, okay, maybe, maybe they can add some stuff, but I don't know about you guys, but I'm really not overly impressed with this Tennessee defense either. Yeah. I'm not impressed with it. Not only am I not impressed with it. I mean, it goes back to Mike Vrabel being our defensive coordinator, right? If you look at that defense and, and what he did, in the one year he was a DC, he was awful. And then you look at his defenses since he's been a head coach; they have not been good. Last year he called the defense and was they were god awful. And I don't know what they really did to address the defense this year. And so there's no reason for anybody to believe that this defense is going to be any different or any better. I'm sure if you ask random t- Titans fans, they're going to be like, "Oh yeah, this is a year," but it's been the year for five years. Like, when is it actually going to be the year? And Mm -hmm. I don't see any reason to actually think that this Titans defense is going to be a defense. You know, they've had players, but the players have never really fully executed and been the players that everybody, you know, claims them to be. Their secondary has always been just somewhat average or below average. Their pass rush is end. They lost Jarrell Casey, like their one mainstay pass rusher. Um, You know, Jeffrey Simmons is a guy to keep an eye on. Definitely be interesting to see his second year what he's capable of doing. It's definitely somebody you want to watch. Bud Dupree, you know, Bud Dupree had mixed reviews and Pittsburgh was never really like the sack guy. Um, Their linebackers are old. Um, So, yeah, I mean, I just don't see anything on this Titans defense that should scare anybody in the AFC South, to be honest. Yeah. what I'm curious what you think, Dalton, on this, on this Titans defense. I mean, I mean, you know, I don't think they did much either. That's what I'm saying. I mean, I look, I look, I look at the. I mean, obviously, I haven't really dug deep at the times before this, but I mean, if you look at the additions and subtractions, 
it seems like the subtractions have outweighed the the additions you know what i mean and um i mean last year it, you know they didn't have a defense last year that they, they literally won they they won the AFC, AFC South um you know because obviously the Colts were a little bit up and down and then i mean the Colts didn't mess around and lose to the Jaguars they would have won the AFC South uh but i mean you look at it and like you know i i just their defense wasn't that good last year. Everybody wanted variable to stop calling the defense. Uh, I mean, even the more I talk about it, it just I, there's nobody. They don't have they don't have that, and, and every team needs this, and it's so hard to get this. But every team needs that guy on the defense that really scares teams. You know, what I mean, right now, uh, I mean the the Texans have had that for a while with JJ Watt. Obviously, you guys have that right now with um, you know with the Force Buckner. Hopefully the Jaguars. Hopefully the Jaguars had that with Josh Allen, but you know there's nobody on the on that defensive line. And you look at the the big things like the Washington Football Team with Chase Young and Miles Garrett over there for the Browns. They just don't have that enforcer on the D line. And you know the the games. I always think games are won and lost in the trenches, and um, they don't. They just don't have a game record there. I mean, yeah. they do have Kevin Bayard, right? Who? Yeah. It's one safety though, right? It's one safety. Yeah. One safety isn't going to change the game or change the approach to opposing offenses against that defense. It's just one guy. So unless Jeffrey yeah. Simmons comes out of nowhere and ends up being the cornerstone of that defensive line, which he could, uh, he he was an extremely talented player in college. You know, was hurt, so he didn't play much last year. He could really take that next step. But outside of that, there's really nobody on that Titans defense that should scare anybody. They did draft yeah. a lot of a lot of corners. Um, you know, Christian Fulton is, it looks like he could be a really good corner, but he's a rookie. So expectations have to be low. Um, so yeah, I don't see anything on the defense for the Titans. Yeah. And it's funny because like they, they went out and they kind of went on a spending spree this, this off season, right on that defensive line. They signed, they stole Danico Autry from us yep. and they're like, Oh my goodness, this guy's gonna be so good. And I'm like, he's inconsistent. Like yep. he's very inconsistent. So I kind of felt like they signed a lot of guys, but it wasn't necessarily like you know, get a move, you know, move their defense from better than better than it was last off season. So I, I don't know. It's just kind of weird. Right. Yeah, for sure. But all right. Well, we'll, we'll end here with my team, obviously the Indianapolis Colts. I'm always curious to get perspectives from other people, um, especially rivals on the Indianapolis Colts. What are your guys' opinions? We'll, we'll start again with you, James. What is your opinion of this Colts offense? Um, it's all going to come down to the quarterback. It, it, everything's going to come down to the quarterback for you guys. Which Carson Wentz are you going to get? Are you going to get Carson Wentz from 2018? Or are you going to get the Carson Wentz that we've all grown accustomed to that you know can't stay healthy, looks inconsistent on the field, goes to his first read, not able to read a defense, um, and just tries to do too much? I mean – not a ton of skill players at the wide receiver position. T.Y. is getting up there. You do have Michael Pittman. Um, tight end wise, nothing really to like, you know, be super excited about. Um, but offensive line, you know, outside of you know your tackles uh, now, unfortunately, with with Tevi, and then you have Julian Davenport starting at left tackle, who mm -hmm. I actually was a big fan of when he was a Texan. He looked like a developmental guy that that could possibly become a pretty decent tackle i know zach hicks has been extremely high on on julian davenport and pass blocking run blocking not so much um mm -hmm. so you know I, I i wouldn't be i'm not too worried about the offense only because i don't know what i'm going to get from the quarterback and if if yeah. if that if we end up if you guys get carson Wentz that you should have gotten and you're hoping to get then this team's gonna could easily make the afc championship because the roster is that good all of, that defense is good. You have depth everywhere. You have a great coaching staff and you have a plan, right? You know, every off season, it's why aren't the Colts signing a bunch of free agents? They have all this money. Why aren't it's because you guys draft. Well, <laughs> you draft. Well, that's where the money goes. It goes to take care of the guys that they draft. And it just took some time for Ballard to be able to actually use that money for guys that he drafted. Um, but yeah, I mean, offensively, you guys have young running backs. Uh, I forgot his name for some reason. I, I can't remember his oh, name. Taylor. But, Johnson Taylor. Yeah, Jonathan Taylor. Um, so tons of reasons to feel pretty optimistic. Just need Carson Wentz to put it all together. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right. I'm curious you from your perspective, Dalton, what do you think about this Colts offense? Yeah, I mean, I'm right there with him. I It's a lot about the quarterback play. And I know like the things we know about the Colts is obviously the O-line is great. They have great running backs. You know, they have like three of them out there. Um, but the, the question marks right now are the obviously the quarterback position and even the wide receivers. I mean, the wide receivers, you know, we we're, you, you project them to be good. None of them have actually besides T.Y., but obviously he's not the T.Y. of old. Like you, you had to project how they're going to do. Um, and I mean, me, I, I'm just, I'm, I wasn't a huge Wentz fan just because, I mean, I've dealt with quarterbacks that have, um, like, especially with Blake Bortles, you know, I mean, these quarterbacks that have mechanical issues and guys that's footworks all over the place. I mean, um, you know, Carson Wentz, I mean, he just, he needs to learn to set his feet and, you know, just, just rip the ball. And he just had a lot of struggles that, that worry me a little bit, but now, I mean, he's back with, um, you know, he's back with his former offense coordinator. Obviously, it's a pretty toxic situation over there with the uh, with the Eagles. So, you know, he's gonna have he's gonna have a second chance. You know what I mean? I mean, the the keys they've given him the keys. They've given him a fantastic offense. So, I mean, if 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 Carson Wentz fails, it's gonna be on him. You know what I mean? It's not gonna be. Uh, you can't blame it on a situation like the Eagles, where you know it's kind of a clown show being run there. No one really knows who's running things over there. Um, you know, he's given, he's giving, he's been given a great O-line been given a great running back. Um, you know, he's given a bunch of receivers that have great potential. So we're just going to have to see how this plays out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. I think you guys nailed it in that Wentz talk. I mean, that's what we've been saying all off season. It's like, if he fails, it's his fault. It's not our fault because we have a great system. Like every year, Frank Records bought in a quarterback, whether it's Andrew Luck, whether it's Jacoby Brissett, whether it's Phillip Rivers, he's gotten the best out of him. So I mean, I, I agree with what you guys said for sure, but we'll wrap it up guys here. Cause I know you guys have busy schedules. We'll wrap it up with this Colts defense who kind of did a little bit of an overhaul at defensive end this off season. They, the first two uh, picks in the draft, they both addressed defensive line. They drafted Quiddy pay uh, in that first round and Dio Dangbo who is on the PUP. So probably won't see him for the first eight games or so, but what are your guys' thoughts overall on this Colts defense? I think ultimately, like like I said before, this roster specifically defensively, it's the best roster in the, in the AFC South. I really don't think it can be questioned. It's just a matter of can it all be put together. The defense has always been good under Eberflus. Uh, luckily, you guys are able to retain Eberflus and lose him to a head coaching job. Um, so that's always a plus. Uh, sorry, my dog had somebody knock on the door. Um, and – you know, you guys addressed your biggest issue of need, which is defensive line. Um, so you have to hope that those young guys can get going, you know, rather quickly. Secondary, still somewhat of a question. Not a lot of depth there. Um, but I think, you know, Iberflu seems to always find a way to hide the weaknesses of his defenses. And that's what's made him such a strong defensive coordinator. And, yeah, I mean, you have Darius Leonard. Like, I don't really know what else to say. Like, Darius is – to me, one of my favorite defensive players in the league. He, he's an awesome dude. One, that's always nice when you're rooting for – well, I can't root for you guys like verbally or, or tw <laughs> tweet about it. Um, but it's fun to watch Darius play. Um, your linebackers look good. Um, so, yeah, it, it's – you know, you guys have a lot of reason to be excited. You guys are building the team properly. It just sucks that it's all going to come down to Carson Wentz. Like, and if you think about it, that's probably got to suck in the locker room too, is they probably understand that it's all going to come down to the quarterback play and what they're going to get. And um, yeah, but defensively, like there's no reason to be concerned about anything when it comes to the Colts, because you guys have a great defensive roster. Hmm. And then yeah. you have Eberflus, who to me, I think is the best defensive coordinator in the league. Hmm. Wow. Okay. Dalton curious. Yeah, and uh, I mean, the good thing about y'all's defense, and I look at the Jaguars right now, and I'm like, you know, we need this. It's like, you know, you can have a you can have a team that has a bunch of really good players, and, you know, that might work out. But, like, if you want to make Super Bowl runs, you want to make deep playoff runs, you have to have guys that are just, like, elite and, like, top five of their position. Um, and it seems like you guys have that, like, with the Forrest Buckner on the interior and also uh, Darius Leonard. And I remember when the, you know, my perspective on this whole thing has changed, like, I used to be a guy like, okay, why would I want to trade away a first round? You know, like when it comes to like a Jalen Ramsey thing or a Jamal Adams thing, or even the trade that you guys made with the Forrest Buckner, it's like, why would I want to trade away first round picks? You know, when those first round picks can be used on guys that are on cheap rookie contracts to trade away for a guy that I had to turn around and pay. 
Mm-hmm. Well, you do it because a lot of those, you know, top five players, they don't make it, they don't make it to the market. You know I mean? They don't, the Forrest Buckner guys like him and guys like Jalen Ramsey, they don't, they don't make it to free agency. So um, you have to take moves like that. And, you know, you look back at it and it's like, okay, like we probably wouldn't have been able to, you know, get a, get a guy of this caliber where they were drafted. And, you know, that, I mean, that's, that's a big thing about you guys is um, the defense, the defense looks good in, in regards to that. I don't know how the, you know, defensive backfield is really looking, but I mean, you guys have some, you know, at least one game wrecker, you know, on the defensive line and the linebacker spot. So, I mean, if you have that, then, you know, a lot of, a lot of, uh, you know, great things can happen. Yeah. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much for coming on, helping kind of give a preview, obviously on your teams and, and giving your thoughts on the Titans and the Colts. Appreciate you guys coming on. We'll have to do it again soon. Sounds good. Thanks, man. Yep. See you guys. Yeah. <laughs>